In this topic, we are going to discuss an aspect of ethics, which is criminalization of bribery. Uh, bribery in previous times was not considered to be a criminal offense. But uh, with the uh, development of ethics in business, uh, the bribery and corruptions, they have uh, turned, they, they have uh, been evolved into concepts of criminal nature. So uh, we are going to talk about the story through which bribery has been criminalized in the international scenario. So before that, we discussed what happened, what is bribery and corruption? Bribery and corruption is paying agents to do things inconsistent with the purpose of their position or office so as to obtain an unfair advantage. Uh, so bribery is to give somebody to do something which they are not supposed to do under their regular office position. Uh, but uh, bribery is not equal to facilitating or grease payments. Uh, uh, grease payments, they are given to uh, public officers or officers in order to do something in an expedite manner. Uh, the thing that they are already required to do uh, by their office, but in order to facilitate that or in order to make that happen quickly. So that is not bribery. Bribery is when you give something, some amount of money to do something with it, which is illegal or unlawful and is not under the, uh, which is not under the purpose of that office. Uh, bribery is looked from varying ethical perspectives. So some uh, nations and cultures, they consider bribery as part of the business. Some consider that uh, because they consider that business is for profits and ed anything that is done for profits is correct. Uh, but there are other cultural uh, scenarios in which bribery is considered to be unethical. Uh, but uh, the general understanding about bribery which has developed over the period of time is that it is something which is, uh, which is dis uh, for the disadvantage of the general people, uh, which is for the uh, disadvantage of uh, the uh, larger group. So it undermines equity, efficiency and integrity in the public service. It undercuts public confidence in markets and aid programs. Uh, it adds to the cost of products and it may affect the safety and economic well-being of the general public. So uh, whether you consider that bribery is correct or not, this is something that has uh, detrimental effects on various different aspects of society and organizations. So therefore, because this general understanding has had developed that bribery is something which is to the dis, uh, disadvantage of the society and the organizations uh, that uh, consider uh, that then led to development of initiatives uh, to stop and criminalize uh, bribery. So first of all, America uh, they passed their Foreign Corrupt Practices Act (FCPA) in 1997. Uh, that permitted facilitating payments but the, that mandated record keeping provisions to help ensure that illegal payments are not disguised as entertainment or business expenses. Uh, that was in 1988. Uh, so facilitating payments were allowed, but they had to be kept under uh, strict account accounting laws. Uh, uh, FCPA has been criticized for creating competitive disadvantage for the US firms and also to create ethnocentrism. Uh, so uh, you remember that according to ethnocentrism, you believe in uh, your own cultural values. So uh, it was criticized that America, uh, it uh, tried to ban um, the payment of bribery amounts to uh, people in the international market. So US firms, jo hain, unke and US officials who are in the international market can't give anyone bribery. So one of the criticism is that they are creating a disadvantage because the rest of the firms from Asia and Europe are all indulged in this practice. So if they don't do American, they will be a disadvantage. And the other thing is that their criticism is that ethnocentrism is that you understand your values and the rest of the rest of the rest of the world are imposed. Uh, Lekin, uh, this is something which was uh, then taken up by rest of the world as well. In 1996, UN adopted the Declaration Against Corruption and Bribery in International 
commercial transactions uh, which committed the UN members to criminalize bribery and deny tax deductibility for bribes. And then in 1997, OECD, which is one of the biggest organizations to control uh, commerce, uh, uh, it passed the Convention on Combating Bribery of Foreign Public Officials in International Business Transactions. So according to that OECD members con uh, convention, members, they agreed to establish domestic legislation by the end of 1998, criminalizing the bribing of foreign public officials on an extraterritorial basis. So uh, 1998, the members hain, they were supposed to make domestic laws, not just international laws, that they will local domestic national laws, which will be जो फॉरेन लोग आके तो ब्राइब्स देते हैं लोकल कंट्री के अंदर उसको कटेल करने का और उसको पकड़ने का तरीका डिसाइड करेंगे और द ओएसीटी कन्वेंशन दैट केम इनटू फोर्स इन फेब्रुअरी 1999 एंड बाय 2009 38 कंट्रीज हैड रेटिफाइड दिस सो व्हाट दे आर सपोज्ड टू डू दैट ईच मेंबर स्टेट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू अंडरगो अ पीयर रिव्यू and to provide a report reviewing its implementation of the convention. So the country reports, they are also available on the website of OECD. Uh, then OECD requires convention, uh, requires sanctions to be commensurate with the domestic penalties applicable to bribery of public officials. So uh, pe bhi, uh, public officials ki bribery ka scene jo hai, wo nazar aata hai, वहां वो उनको पेनल्टीज जो हैं वो इशू करते हैं सो अभी तक जो इनिशिएटिव्स दिए गए हैं वो सप्लाई साइड ऑफ ब्राइबरी के बारे में लिए गए यानी कि जो लोग देते हैं उनको कंट्रोल करने के बारे में लिए गए लेकिन अभी जो जो साइड इग्नोर हो रही है वो डिमांड साइड है यानी कि जो लोग ब्राइबरी लेते हैं उनका कांटेक्ट जो है वो इंटरनेशनली किस तरह से कंट्रोल किया जाए दैट इज समथिंग which the HR managers are now responsible to take into account. Then another uh, initiative to control bribery and corruption is the Transparency International Organization, which is a German NGO, which publishes an annual corruption perception index. This is a perception, but not actual levels of corruption for over 50 countries. And it is based on international surveys of business people and financial journalists and each country is scored from 100, which is highly clean, to zero, which is highly corrupt. Uh, 2018 ke corruption index ke mutabik, the top 10 uh, neat clean countries hain, they are Denmark, New Zealand, Finland, Sweden, Singapore, Switzerland, Norway, Canada, Luxembourg, uh, they have a score of 80 plus. Uh, so uh, towards 100 is being clean. Uh, so you can see that all these countries, except Canada, are small countries with high uh, per capita income and uh, they are uh, successfully developed countries. Uh, Pakistan uh, is uh, at the 117th number. The score is 33, uh, up by three points since 2015. Uh, similarly, to compare, India is at 78. The score is 41 and up three points since 2015. So you can see that Pakistan is way below India and way below. Uh, so about if there are about 190 countries uh, in the world uh, or uh, some kind of similar number, uh, then Pakistan is at the 117th number. Uh, so that means that Pakistan is at a high level of corruption and bribery index which needs to be dealt with and which needs to be uh, taken into account by the HR managers who are working in the international domain, particularly in Pakistan.